Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to look at monomial functions and their graphs. So a monomial function is a function that has only one term in it. And a monomial function can be written in the form f of x equals k times x to the nth power. In here, k is just going to represent some constant value. And our n power needs to be a positive integer value. So some of your very basic functions like f of x equals x or f of x equals x squared are monomial functions because they have one term in them. They're constant in the front. Their k value would just be 1. On our plain x function, its power would just be a first power since it's not written on there. And on our x squared function, then the power would just be 2. Now as we start to take a look at our monomial functions, I want to look at their graphs so that we can do a little comparing. And what I actually want to do is I want to look at some groups of monomial functions. So the first thing I want to look at are odd-powered monomial functions. So I mean things like f of x equals just a plain x with a first power on it, f of x equals x cubed, and maybe f of x equals x to the fifth power. And we're going to look at these by graphing them out on our calculator. So I've got those three odd-powered functions typed into my calculator, and we're going to graph them out. And what I want you to notice about these graphs is that they have some very similar behaviors to each other. So if we start at the origin and read our graphs out to the right-hand side, we should notice that all three of our graphs are increasing. Now the red and the black graph are increasing a lot faster than the blue graph because of those cubed and fifth powers on those functions, but they're still increasing as we work our way out to the right. And as we start at the origin and work our way out to the left, our graphs again are displaying similar behavior. They're all decreasing, going down as we work our way to the left. Now another thing I want you to notice is that all three of these graphs have origin symmetry, meaning if we take what's in the top right quadrant and rotate it around the origin down into the bottom third quadrant, all of those points would match up. And remember, having origin symmetry means that we're dealing with an odd function. And if we think about the powers, we had x to the first power, and x to the third power, and x to the fifth power. All of those powers were odd numbers. So there's a connection in there between the type of power being an odd number and the function itself being an odd function. Now we can also talk about some monomial functions with even powers. So something like f of x equals x squared, or f of x equals x to the fourth, or even f of x equals x to the sixth. And again, we're going to graph these out on our calculator to compare the pictures. So I've already got my functions typed in, so I'm going to graph them out. And similar to when we were looking at those odd-powered functions, I want you to notice that our graphs have similar behaviors. As we start at the origin and work our way out to the right, our graphs are all increasing. And similarly, if we start at the origin and work our way out to the left, our graphs are all increasing as we go to the left as well. Now we know that an x squared graph is a parabola, but as we're looking at this x to the fourth and x to the sixth, we're getting sort of parabolic shapes with our graph. They're just a little flatter around the origin. One other thing that we should notice is that all of these graphs have y-axis symmetry. There are mirror images on the right side of the picture as the left side of the picture. And when a function or when a graph of a function has y-axis symmetry, we call that function even. And that should make sense as we're looking at these powers because we had x squared, so to the second power, we had x to the fourth power, and we had x to the sixth power. So all of those powers on our functions were even numbers. So we're going to look at some functions and we're going to think about some transformations on functions and how those different transformations can affect the graph of our power functions. So if we think about the function f of x equals x cubed, compared to the function g of x equals 2x cubed. We should notice that both of those are cubic 
function, so they're going to have very similar pictures to each other, but that second one has a k value of 2 in front of it compared to just having a k value of 1. Now we should recognize that as a vertical stretch of our graph by a factor of 2. So we would imagine that these two graphs are going to have exactly the same shape, except our 2x cubed function, because we've got that 2 in front of our x cubed, should get taller faster as we look at the graphs. So I'm going to graph these out on my calculator just to check. So I've already got both of my functions typed in. When I hit graph, my first graph is my normal cubic function, and my second graph is that 2x cubed. So I can see that my second graph is getting taller faster because of that vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Now we're going to look at another pair of functions in here as well. So let's say we had h of x equals x to the fourth compared to j of x equals negative two-thirds x to the fourth. So as we look at that k value on our second function, we've got that two-thirds. So since we're dealing with a k value that's less than 1, it's a fraction, we should think about that as being a vertical shrink. So our graph is going to be shorter than our original graph. And we've also got that negative out in front as well. And when you put a negative in front of the function, that's an x-axis reflection. So we're going to flip this graph over our x-axis along with it being shorter. And we're going to graph this out on our calculator just to confirm. So I've got both of those functions typed into my calculator. When I hit graph, my first function to pop up was my normal x to the fourth function. And my second one was that negative two-thirds x to the fourth. Now it might be a little bit tough to see because we did flip it over as well, but this graph is actually squished down a little bit. It's a little bit shorter than our blue graph, but we also had that x-axis reflection happening. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.